guys through tennis. And uh, as, a, as a point in case you have a couple of players here, you'll notice I've asked them to kind of join in, but I do actually have a Hunter Whalen over here. Hunter, give us a wave. Uh, this gentleman has come back into my coaching world and emphasizes what I'm talking about here. Uh, I used to coach him at the Saddlebrook International Tennis Academy as part of the ITF team from 12 to 18 years old. Four years we spent working together, uh, four years out of 13 to 18, and now he's back with me, reconnecting, and now he's a 20-year-old back on the tour. We're trying to help him get his professional career, so I'm very honored to have Hunter here, but I've coached this gentleman since 13 years old, and now I'm back. So that's part of my journey is, is to sharing my making better lives through tennis, and hopefully, yeah, uh, that is a good example of that. So I'm pleasure to have him here. The second thing that I want to share is that as an my true belief is that growth is achieved better through greater collaboration over competition. So I want this to be covered. I truly believe that as collaborators, we work better together. So I'm really honored to share this and meet you all this week and really hope that this is a collaborative effort where you can take some of these ideas because all the things that you're gonna to see to me are actually not directly from me. They're being stolen, sponged, or through the world, the experiences I've had in the tennis world, these are examples from some of the greatest coaches, some of the greatest players that I've had the pleasure of working with. Now, what I'd like to do is have these guys here uh, warming up while I'm continuing my introduction. Uh, so guys, they're gonna start off here. You'll notice these guys here. I'm very big on creating fundamentals. So what I wanna do is I'm asking these guys, now you may see this drill, if you haven't, this is, I call this the Novak Djokovic drill, kind of a famous tennis player. But this is a drill, you'll see him and Dustin Vemich on a YouTube video, if you're able to highlight this. This is a drill that I do with my high performance players. We do have the honor, we have Josh here today and Anton, two college players, and we have Patrick here as well, Steve Sun. So we've got some high performance players here. But what they're doing is a woman, and this can apply to multiple levels. This is a simple version. These guys are doing a Novak Djokovic drill. I'm asking them to do that because I want them to have their fundamentals warmed up. To me, it's more important to have great fundamentals than great technique. What I mean by that is that notice these guys to be controlling this drill, they're holding the continental grip, these guys are in an athletic position and they're true, doing three fundamentals. Now what I mean by fundamentals is number one, creating time and space, okay? Regardless of your technical level, the importance of creating time and space is irrelevant of technique. And so these guys are working on this drill uh, to, all to create that time and space early in the warm-up. The second thing, getting into position, being balanced, making sure that they're hitting the ball where they want to hit it with good balance, and that is part of the second fundamental, is making sure you're hitting the ball where you want to hit it, not letting the ball play you. The third fundamental you're seeing is the ability to stay on the ball. We're gonna talk about how these players are staying on the ball, because they don't just hit, and what happens when you hit and pull off? You lose control. So these guys are training that fundamental of staying on the ball, staying committed. Notice where they have to hit with their weight going forward. Also, what is the wrist doing? to make contact in a continental to control this ball like ping pong, does your wrist have to be relaxed or tense? Relaxed, okay? So it's getting the body so the wrist and the upper body can relax. So again, these guys are just doing this drill. Guys, can you just show them the advanced version of this? So this is the basic version, but these guys now are gonna step in where they're doing it a little bit quicker. This is a little bit more for advanced play. You'll see pros doing this. You can do this in full court for more movement. Obviously, I've got two half court players here. But the guys are just doing this a warm-up drill, working together. You can make this and play competitive points as well. So there's many progressions and regressions of this drill. But again, it's just a good, fun drill that these guys can warm up. You see, having a lot of fun. And all these guys are doing this to warm up. I've actually done this with Lisa Stani, had Stefani. I had the pleasure of working her with her professional career. And uh, she came to play for the Indian Wells in practice. She was at Pepperdine visiting. And this is the drill she starts off with. Something we did years ago at Settlement. She's still doing this drill today to help with her professional career. And she's currently top 10 in the world, six months injured right now, but this is a drill she's doing still to this day as a warm-up. Anyway, so these guys are gonna, so what I'm gonna do now, okay, um, I'm gonna now go back to a tennis and movement drill, but I wanna give credit to where it's due, is that I'm simply sharing in this first presentation, I'm kind of take, sharing my belief that success in the modern day game requires great movement. I had the pleasure of working uh, with the LTA, the Lawn Tennis Association, and alongside Jez Green. Jeremy Green is a very world-renowned uh, movement coach, specialist, who with multiple top players in the world, Andy Murray, Sasha Zarev, Dominic Thiem, I mean, the, the list is endless. But early in, his uh, early in his coaching career, I got the pleasure of working alongside him with the LTA, and I'm implementing some of the drills. So what you're gonna see today is me doing a drill series is a lot of the stuff that he has designed, because I wanna share a little story is that the key to moving well, okay, is actually uh, balance. We talked about balance, but the key to moving well is to actually do it instinctively. So I'm gonna show you some drills today that we're gonna do here that the goal is to get these players at every level to move instinctively. We do not want to think. 
Thinking takes time, thinking is not good. And that's from an applied sports psychologist. We do not want to think, it takes time. We want to train our players to move instinctively. So even though you're going to see some movement drills, the goal is to train them so the players are doing them automatically, doing them instinctively well. Okay, um, but I'm going to let these guys go to start with. So what I want to do, is actually need a volunteer. So guys, I'm going to have you give yourself a little water break there, give you a little breather. We're going to go and meet on that side here. But I need a volunteer first. Uh, Mr. Remind me of first, James. Yeah, James, can I borrow you? This guy looks pretty athletic. I picked him out in the crowd earlier. James, you come here. James looks pretty athletic here, so I want to help describe. So first of all, you guys just take a minute to break. We're going to meet over there. What I want to do is I, I actually want to just discuss what movement is. So just to bring some topic to this is we're going to talk about the balance and the, te the testing of balance. So Jess Green uh, once asked Carlos Moya, who was the world number two at the time, how he defines uh, how he defines the importance of movement. And as Alistair highlighted this, Carlos explained that balance was the essential ingredients to great movement, which is a critical to sustained performance at the highest level. Carlos Moyer, pretty good guy to, to learn from. So this is something it is, but what I want to do is I want to break this down in a simple way. So I have a, a methodology about how to teach balance to every level of player. So I'm going to ask James here currently. So I'm going to say there's five levels of basic balance. So James, I'm going to ask you to stand with your feet close together, please. Okay, just stand to the side. Now, what I'm going to do, this is what I call level one balance. Let's me push him over. Okay, yeah, he's pretty easy. So pretty good athlete there. That's level one balance. Feet close together, not exactly a very good position. Now, level two balance. Now I want you to feet shoulder width apart, but I do not want to use the ground. I want you to simply spread out at a shoulder width apart. And now, without putting any loading in the ground, I'm just going to push you over. No, you can't push against me. Just keep your balance there. Good. So that's level two balance. Noticing that he's in an athlete, he's in a a wider position, but he's not really in an athletic position. We see that a lot. That's level two balance. Now, I'd like him to do the same, but now I'd like to put 50% of weight on either side of your legs. Okay, so now he's loaded. He's got an equal weight, 50% balance, evenly balanced here. This is level three balance. Ready? Push him over now. Good. But level three, better, stronger. That's level three balance. Level four balance. Okay, now I'd like you to put 80% of your weight on this leg here. 20% on this leg here, and you're gonna load 80% of your weight here. Now I'm gonna push him over. Okay, tough. Let's switch that to the other side in case you're hitting off the other leg. Okay, same again. Too good. Now that's not me being weak, that's him being strong, okay? So 80% of his weight, he's in level four balance. Pretty good. There is a level five balance. So level four, now question for you. At what level of balance did you feel effective? Yeah. Good. So yeah, level three, he felt strong. Level four, but would level four feel lots? Would you would you like to be at level four balance if you were hitting a ball? If you had time on the ball, would you like to be at that level four? Do you feel like you could transfer a nice, relaxed, technically yeah, free shot? Great. So level four is optimal. There is a level five balance. You see this in the pro dynamic balance. I know Mike Jeanette talked about this a little earlier. Dynamic balance is balance while moving. So we're going to demonstrate some of this. Obviously, I can't get you to demonstrate that. So round of applause for Jay. So thank you for his level of balance. Thank you for not you know, making me look better. But uh, level five balance is dynamic balance. And we're gonna show that now. So it's balance while moving. Sometimes you don't have time to get into level three or level four balance. But to be a great tennis player, you need to be at level three or above. Level one, level two is not gonna work. You wanna be an athlete. But it starts with this athletic position. You've gotta have an athletic position as a foundation to build on. And then you're gonna transfer that athletic position into your shot in one of those levels of balance. So let me demonstrate. So these guys are here. Now, a couple of these guys have gone through these drills before. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, is you're gonna follow the, the sheet here. What I'm gonna do, okay, is, first of all, before I get these guys to show these movement drills, would everyone agree that movement is important? And in the modern day, the modern day movement is probably one of the critical ingredients to success. Who'd, raise your hand if you're in agreement with it, that tennis is, and movement is a central part of the sport. Okay, good, just wanna get some ideas there. Now, further proof that movement is important. Who are the four famous best tennis players in the recent game. Nadal, Djokovic, Federer, okay? And uh, a guy, uh, an employee, Murray, would throw in there when he was fit, so Murray. Uh, would you also agree that they're four, probably the best movers in the sport? Would we also agree that Serena Williams is probably the best athletes, physically, the most explosive? So we're talking about the best players in the world, traditionally, are also the best movers in the world. Seeing the connection here. So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm now going to showcase some drills that I do. And I do this drill, I've obviously got some high-level players with every level. You can progress and regress these drills for every level. So what I'm going to do, I do this probably five times a week. This is how I start players. So we've got two lines here. We're going to do four different types of ball. The first ball here is simply a dead ball. You're going to go down the line, guys. Okay, and all you're going to do is you're going to avoid missing in the net. So two lines each. 
We're gonna get these guys warmed up. Okay, next two in, please. Okay, that one is a red belt. Okay, ready guys, next two in. So notice here, that I'm simply giving these guys no pace and a low ball, and I'm simply asking these guys to wake up their athletic positions. So I'd like to see these guys starting in their athletic positions and simply asking them to learn how to get their lower bodies engaged. So this is a ball you'll see on the court a lot, a ball that's kind of deep down the middle. By giving them absolutely no pace, a drop feed, I'm forcing them to really engage and transfer that athletic position into a shot. Notice how their upper bodies and automatically nice and relaxed. They're able to get good extension. But a lot of the time it's about them simply engaging this athletic position and bringing it down to the court and then trusting the upper body to be relaxed. So watch again a couple more. Still guys warming up. This is ball number one. I'll typically do this for a couple of sets. My only request is first of all is if they're going to miss, where are they not going to miss? Net. Okay, I don't mind them missing long. Notice I'm not even watching the ball. I don't care about if they're missing long. Missing long, like we taught Peter Smith yesterday, depth is the key, okay? We don't mind, missing net. Okay, so guys, anything missing the net is five, uh, five body squats here, just so you can really work on your athletic position. Ready, here we go. So again, getting these guys engaged in their lower bodies. Okay, good. And next one, please. Okay, so you can get here. This is level one, ball number one. I really don't mind what's going on here. But I just want to make sure, uh oh, oh, there you go. Hunter's being well trained. All right. So Hunter's going to do his five body squats. Let's go last set to each, okay, guys? So this is warm up. I may do this for five minutes. Sometimes these ball drills I'll do, I'll actually repeat them and I'll just stay with one ball. It doesn't have to. If the players, when you play, I've done these drills with 3 0 lady players, okay, to do it. But I'll typically stay to the few basic balls. Good so, day. So, guys, now, question for you. Just, what are you feeling there? Are you feeling that your athletic positions are being transferred into the shots? Do you feel good in that position? Okay, now also, if this ball happens in a match, and I'm asking these guys here, where would that ball, would you see that ball a lot in a match? Are you often getting balls that are kind of coming deep between this kind of B and C area? So what is the best, so when you get a ball that comes deep with that, where is usually your best target? Yeah, back there, yeah, back where it came from, right, deep. Yeah, so you're trying. So what we're trying to do is we're engaging this athletic position. Now, that's ball number one. A ball is down the middle, they're just standing up. The key things I want to coach here is the ability to simply stay down and athlete, stay down and stay on top of the ball so they're promoting that relaxation. Ball number two. So now we're gonna spread these guys out a little bit. We're gonna feed a ball out wide. So no real information yet. I'm just gonna feed them a ball out wide. But now I'm feeding the ball out wide. Notice here the movement pattern has changed. So now these guys might not have time to get into position. So I'm feeding this drill, and these guys might not have time. So I'm really looking for them to stay low and stay dynamic in their movement pattern. Okay, notice also you'll see that their first step most efficiently is a crossover step. So they're getting out there and they're training that first step. Okay, did someone miss in the net? What happens when we miss in the net, guys? Okay, good, move it quickly. Five body squats, thank you, Anton. So a couple more here. Now, the goal here, guys, if you don't think these guys have time to stop and hit. Go, 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 top one, Hunter. Nice, good ball. So a couple of things there. Right, good job, good ball. A round of applause for that back. That was pretty impressive. Okay, but guys, notice here, it's a dynamic nature. So what I'm looking for these guys is to athletic position, is for them to engage that explosive crossover step and then make sure that they're keeping the ball relaxed and out in front. They do not have time on this ball to stop and hit. So we're looking for a dynamic movement but for them to move, do that effectively, they don't need to think about the lower body. They just need to think about staying relaxed and keeping the ball out in front. So we're looking for them to move if, uh, effectively. And guys, you may say, this, well, is this gonna work for lady players or group players? Yes, this can work if you can uh, get them to understand that the relaxation of the upper body is the key. They have to trust their movement. The more they think about the movement, the more mistakes. Because what happens if these guys stop and try and hit that ball? They're going to be late and close. The techniques are not going to be able to come through. So you're trying to promote relaxation in the upper body and trust the movement. So last set here, guys. Let's get his ball out wide. Okay. And three balls each. He's fine. Very good. Nice. Good. Okay, next three. And then we're going to change the ball again. Notice here, one thing I didn't mention is where is the target? If these guys, I don't mind these guys going down the line, but tactically what we're seeing here is there's an instinct tactically. Where's the highest percentage shot? They're being drawn out wide. Where do we want these guys to be going? Deep cross, deep middle. Okay, them going down. Now, I don't mind if they go to line, but they may never all make it. 
He's a low percentage job. So we wanted these guys to use this ball to kind of reestablish their positioning of the court to get back in control. So I'm looking for these guys instinctively to go cross court or deep middle on the ball like that. All right, guys, move back a little bit. We're now going to do the next ball. Ball pushing you back. So guys up to the baseline. I'm now going to do four balls only, not six. So the ball's going to drop back. And now I'm going to feed him a ball, deliberately pushing these guys back. There's a little nice feed for Josh. i got to remind myself to be mean to Josh because he's from New Zealand. <laughs> All right, let's go. Next, guys. Okay, dropping the ball back. Okay, so I'm pushing these guys back, back on the baseline. I'm asking them to recover. So we're working on a slightly different movement pattern here. We call this the drop back step. So Jez Green famously coined this. This is a drop back step. So these guys are looking. Not a great movement there, Anton. You took about 500 steps, went two or three. So guys, uh, I want to share a little bit. Let's do this again. If you want to move better, okay, you've heard the expression more footwork. My observation right again is move less, not more. Save time. I had the pleasure absolute pleasure of being at watching Roger Federer at the Wimbledon final. I got lucky enough to be watching Roger Federer play Mark Philippus' center court Wimbledon. Okay, yeah, honored, great, yeah, fortunate. I was given the, the, the tickets uh, from my chairman at the club and I was a young, you know, younger guy there, 21 year old, but I had the pleasure to take my parents and my best friend to watch Roger Federer win his first Grand Slam. I was at center court Wimbledon. Wow. The guy I'd seen a couple of years before when I was working a little bit, but I saw the, like a butterfly. The guy moves the most efficiently. So I want to give one example of this, and Josh has volunteered to do this. So what I want to do is I just want to do this drill again, but I want to do this ball here, and I want you to do an inside-out forehand for me. So I'm going to go here, inside-out forehand, but I want to see this movement pattern. Roger Federer, his movement efficiency is world-class. Okay, and that's why he hits so many forehands on the second ball. I think it's the statistic Michael will help me. 87% of second balls that Federer hits is a forehand. Because his movement is so good, he's so early with his movement, but Roger Federer moves less into it to create more time. So what he's seeing here, quick example, is that when Roger Federer goes here, most players will get to here and will take one, two, three steps to get inside out. Watch Roger. When he's here, boom, one, two. He's there in half there in the last step. So Roger Federer is one of the best moves in the world because he moves less, not more. Therefore, he creates more time. Okay, anyway guys, back to work. So what we're gonna do there, we're gonna do the same ball again. Drop back, okay, and then recover, drop back. Okay, good, so what I'm looking for here guys, is I'm looking for you guys to have a little bit more finish. So up you go. I'm looking for you guys to have a drop back and a crossover step. So this ball is pushing them back. So what we're looking for, and you can teach every level, is we're looking for these guys establishing their athletic position. We're looking for these guys, the most efficient step, if there's that much distance to go, is to simply drop back and cross over, and then reestablish, yeah, loading on that back foot so they can get more body weight behind. But you only have to do that if the ball's pushing back. If the ball is not deep, there's nothing wrong with simply dropping back and shuffling. This is the most efficient step possible. But the ball is pushing you back, a drop back crossover is the most efficient one. It's gonna help them get body weight and get the ball to come up so they can attack and get the ball. So guys, question me, where is your target here? If the ball is pushing you back deep middle, where is your target? Deep middle, hey, they're trying to recover their court positioning. So they're looking to go deep middle, trying to recover their court position. Everyone agree with that? Everyone on the same page there? Good. So, like to do this, but again, my second question is, and this is to you guys, when you're doing this, when you're moving efficiently, what's the most important step? Is it the drop back or is it the crossover? It's kind of a trick question. My personal belief is it's the drop back because it's the first step. If you get an aggressive drop back here, what's automatic? The crossover is automatic. Okay, so it's the most effective shot. The first step is always the most expensive. And that's not me, that's Jez Green. Okay, that's good. That's coming from him. Okay, right guys, we're going to move on to the next ball now. So we've done a ball down the middle. We've done a ball out wide. We're going to do a ball deep ball. Now we're going to do the next one. We have missed the ball out here deliberately. There is a ball I think was talked about where you're kind of doing a semi-open here in the deep. I've been kind of deliberately missing that just to kind of save time. I want to do the short ball here. So you guys switch sides, please. I only use four balls this time. So guys, now we're going to do the short ball. So let these guys do the ball first. And what I'm looking for here is these guys are getting back. Is they're hitting the short ball. Again, so now next two in, two balls each. But what I'm looking for these guys to do is to treat this ball like it's an approach shot, like a shot. So I'm asking these guys to go all the way 
to the white line. So after they've hit, it is important. I want these guys to go to the white line so they're naturally transferring and going forward. So I'll do this again, guys. So it's a short ball. Okay, going all the way. And the goal here is to be unrestricted with the upper body. Now, again, what is the movement pattern that we're trying to encourage when they're coming through here? It's not stop. Now, if you've got open court, your opponent's off the court, I have no problem with you sitting here and trying to load and just put the ball away. But the goal here is to take time away from your opponent, is to be dynamically balanced so you can move through this line and then naturally come in and then finish, yeah, with your movement and finish in the front third. But this is a transition ball. So I'm asking these guys to hit this ball like it's an approach shot. So guys, again, Make sure on this ball that you're moving through the ball and you're having an unrestricted upper body. I do not want to see that you're stopping it and you feel like you're cramped. So give yourself some freedom to hit this ball. And again, move all the way through. Also here, I like this, this got brought up earlier, is where is the best target for the approach? Can I get some answers from the crowd, please? Where is the best target for the approach? Throw some answers out. Yeah, raise your hand, I'm going to take some answers. Good, all the way through. Yes. Where's the, yeah, 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 one here. Down the line. Down the line. Cross court. Cross court. Any other answers, yeah. Huh? Drop shot. Drop shot. Where else, any other answers? Weaker, weaker side. Pick your side. Weak, weaker, weaker side, side. right. Lots of good answers here. I agree with all of them because my, as is, we'll hear a lot of coaches say, I like this in just, most players, a lot of high performance, you've heard it, go down the line. Okay, approach down the line. I don't mind that, okay, but the better answer is what is your first instinct? Because what's the biggest mistake that we make on the short ball? Hesitation, or we stop and yeah, get caught. So the real better is what is your first thing? Because are the times where down line, what if the guy's stuck and is still caught in that down the line? Going down the line right back to them might not be the best. So it's really where is your first instinct? Where do you see the open court? Where? But I don't mind down the line. I, I rather prefer the answer of what is your first instinct on the approach? Okay, so I think it's, yeah, that's it. kind of is, I agree with everyone else, but I think trust your first instinct because you have more time. All right, All right, last thing guys. So now we get to have some fun. I need one player at a time. We have the fun. This is the last drill of the finale. So we're gonna go Hunter first, let's go Missouri. Okay, representing Kansas City. Okay, we're gonna do five balls. Now we put it all together. This is the fun, this is the finale. So are you ready? Okay, you can feed anything on, on five balls. If you miss it in there, enjoy your body squats. Ready, go. Get ready, ball. Back up. Patrick, you're in the way. Get ready, and go. Get ready, short ball. And good, boom. Good, round of applause please, pretty good job. Get ready, next player in. Good, ready. So I can feed all hands ready. Watch the movement, guys. This is a movement, get you back over there. Ready, and go. Okay, good. Okay, next player in. Ready, go. Inside out. Get ready. See you throwing it a little inside out there. Josh loves his inside out four man. Ready, and short ball. And good, good. Next player in. We'll save the best till last. Lefty's best, no pressure, buddy. Just nobody has missed in the net yet, so just no pressure, yeah? Don't think about the net. <laughs> oh, and again. And last one. All you. Uh, did you see he cheated the cones there? Good. Anyway, guys, round of applause. My, my point is, okay, so round of applause, you, Valley. Okay, all right, guys, get a water break. You guys are done with the movement dribbles. So again, just to recap on what you just saw there, we went through kind of some five varieties. The first ball, again, you can rotate. I've got four players here, you can do this with three players, you can do this with multiple players. But the, my main thing is that ball, just to activate the athletic brain. Get some water, guys. I'm gonna probably use you later on. So you guys got a five minute break. And the, the first ball there is just short ball, no pace. Stay down, stay on top of the ball. Establish your athletic position, transfer it. Notice here as well, I'm a big fan, when this says athletic position, this is the foundation of success as an athlete. And I want to prove that a little bit more, because how do basketball players, yeah, establish, yeah? How do basketball players defend? Okay, how, how, do, how do goalkeepers get ready to defend a goal? Every sport has an athletic position, and the best players in the world do it better. Okay, so make sure that you're starting with that athletic position. And that's why I do that first drill to start with. But also, I'm not losing anything for the creation of time. So when I'm here, okay, I'm still very early. The, the preparation is key. It has to be synchronous. I know there's some other concept, but yes, creating time. We don't have time. We need to find ways to create them. So when I'm doing this, I like to use the turn and load principle. But I want to make sure that you're activating your upper body and lower body. 
to transfer the athletic position, okay? All right, so you've seen those drills. Uh, again, the four varieties, the out wide ball, the crossover step, the dynamic movement, key is to keep the ball out in front. On the pushback, we're looking for them to go drop back in crossover step, where they're trying to hit the ball. I like to use this example, and I, I use that to ask this to gentlemen, not to ladies. Like, how much do you weigh? Oh, I'm 150 pounds, okay? All right, well, I want to make sure that on that ball you drop out, you're getting 150 pounds of your body weight behind this ball, because that's going to make them really achieve the purpose of moving your feet, is to buy time, to load, and then transfer, like that. Level four balance, we want to try and create a level four balance on every ball we can, when we have time or when we can create time. Okay, level four balance is optimal to transfer. Okay, all right, and the last thing is um, the, the short ball. I want to make sure they're hitting it. Yeah, I mean, I'll use this, my, I'm very pleasured to work with Mike as well, but I really love what something Mike told me today about this chest high ball. When you're attacking the ball with your body, it doesn't need to be 100%, okay? You can go 6% chest high, but that approach shot, because you're taking time away from the player, I've been adding that to that drill recently, is I want to make sure that player on the approach shot is hitting the ball, you know, it seems like their body weight is hitting it, but I'm looking for them to have an unrestricted approach shot, okay, and they're dynamic in their movement pattern on their goal to what? Transition into the front third of the court, okay? Um, and that's it for things. So, and obviously the combo is just away. Did everyone see? How good did those guys move in the combo? Pretty good, right? You see, but was it trained instinctively? I mean, two of those guys have never done, well, actually, three of those players have never done that drill sequence. Yes, they're high-level players. Movement needs to be instinctive, but hopefully those drills progressively train them to be successful in the, in the, in the, in the fifth one, because they were moving well. And if movement's that important, you need to be able to teach that to your students as well as everything else. So, anyway, that's the first part. What I want to do now is I want to have a little fun with you all. So I'm going to move on to my second kind of presentation. You can, I'll let me, before I do that,